Hello, Tom here for Signal Sounds. This is another video all about the small but mighty Disting Mark IV from Expert Sleepers. This 4HP multifunctional Eurorack module now has well over 100 algorithms offering just about every function you can think of. We recently got the Unperson to pick out five of his favourites, which you can check out by the link on screen and below. But for this video, I wanted to try something a little different. See, when the Disting Mark IV was reviewed back in issue one of Waveform magazine, there was one particular line that caught my eye. It said, you could literally build a complete system out of only Distings. Now, since I happen to have access to all the Distings I could possibly ever need here at Signal Sounds, I thought it might be fun to actually put that claim to the test. So behold, the Decker Disting. Yep, I've stuck 10 Disting Mark IVs in this case, and I've used them to make a self-contained patch that includes a sequence synth voice, drums, and effects. The only other modules are a Mordex data for visualizing the audio, and an IntelliGel mix-up so I can quickly bring the various elements in and out. There's no MIDI involved, no other audio processing other than a little compression on the final recording. Want to find out how it's done? Let's jump in. Okay, so let me explain the idea behind this patch and I'll explain which algorithms I've chosen for each of these 10 distincts. It's quite an ambitious patch in a way because it's got drums, synth and effects in it, but it kind of shows how powerful some of these individual algorithms can be. The general idea is I've got clock and sequencing from these three distincts down at the bottom left. I've got a couple of sound sources at the top left. The audio path kind of runs left to right across the top into a couple of effects. So sound-wise, there are two sound sources. One is this top left disting, which is the i7 dual audio player algorithm, and that is providing my drum sounds, which are two samples. One is a one bar sample of a kick drum and a snare, literally just a simple kick and snare pattern, 808 electro kind of beat, made it in Ableton, stuck it on the SD card. That'll get triggered once a bar and be the kind of backbone of the patch. The other sample is a 808 closed hi-hat, and that is being triggered individually with a rhythm uh, from a Euclidean pattern from one of these distings down here, which I'll get onto shortly. So I've kind of got a, a one bar loop and a one shot hi-hat. They are both coming into the first two channels of the mix up. Um, the other sound source, the main synth voice, is a subtractive synth voice based around the second disting, which is in mode uh, B8 VCO with wave shaping. That gives me two wave outputs. One is a triangle to soar output, which has got control over the shape. And that's output A. Output B is a square sub oscillator an octave below that. I'm taking those both into disting number three, which is an H1 crossfade pan algorithm. And that lets me manually or under CV control crossfade between those two oscillator outputs and produce a single output. That algorithm, H1, also has kind of a bonus LFO on output B, which you can configure. Uh, I've set that up, that's just a slow triangle LFO, that's going into the wave shape CV on the VCO just, pr just prior to it. So that's basically slowly morphing between a triangle and a saw wave from that main output thanks to that LFO, which gives us a bit more kind of sonic variety, which is nice. Um, yeah, that mixed output of those two oscillator outputs then goes into the fourth disting, which is in D5 low pass, high pass filter mode. Very straightforward kind of VCF. I'm just taking the low pass output from output A into disting number five, which is in E2 attack release envelope and VCA algorithm. Super handy, gives you a sort of straightforward envelope with a macro control that controls the attack and decay time or release time, um, has a built-in VCA, and you can take that envelope output as well to use elsewhere. So what I'm doing is taking a copy of that envelope. The same envelope that's controlling the VCA is also being fed back into the filter cutoff CV input so I can control the filter with the same envelope, open the filter with those notes. Um, so very conventional kind of synth voice with one simple envelope, one VCA, one filter. Um, the output of that VCA then goes into testing number six, which is in D2 tape delay mode. Um, very simple nice kind of quite analog sounding uh, mono delay. That output then goes into the final disting, which is L2 mono to stereo reverb. And that gives me a stereo output, which goes into the final channel of the mix up. In terms of sequencing a clock, the disting at the bottom left is in mode G6 clock. This works a little bit like PAMS in that you set a master tempo and then outputs A and B can be set to output pulses at divisions of that tempo. So output B is outputting one clock at the start of every bar, which is triggering the one bar drum loop. Um, the other output is outputting 16th notes and being fed straight into the next disting along here, which is in H5 dual Euclidean pattern 
uh, algorithm, that produces two Euclidean trigger patterns, um, one of which from output B is going to trigger the hi-hat sample, and I can control how many steps with the Z knob here so I can very quickly kind of change how dense that pattern is from, from full sixteenth notes all the way to something a lot sparser. Um, and then I've got a nine step out of 16 Euclidean pattern coming out of output A into the final disting, which is in F6, shift register random quantized CV mode. That's basically a Turin machine acting as a melodic sequencer. And I'm taking the volt per octave output into the VCO. I'm taking the trigger output into the envelope up here. Let's have a listen to the drum sound first of all, the drum sounds, um, starting with just the loop. If I start the clock by pressing Z on this disting, it'll start firing at the start of every bar a single trigger to trigger that drum loop, which is coming in here. I added a little bit of kind of room reverb to that loop before I exported it and stuck it on the card, just to give it a little bit of space. Um, and yeah, you can see the 16th notes coming out of output A, because the output jacks on this thing always kind of give you a visual indication of the signal. So that's going into input X, and at the moment it's going to be firing 16th notes back out of output B to trigger the hi-hat, which you can hear there. And if I play with the Z control, I can go down from 16 to sparser patterns. So let's leave it on, say, 14, so we maybe skip a couple, but it's still quite dense. So that's my drums. I've got, yeah, a little bit of manual control over the hi-hats, no real control over the loop, but there we go. I can mute it. So let's mute those two for a second, and then let's have a listen to the synth part. So, like I said, a 9 by 16 Euclidean trigger pattern firing into the shift register, which is currently locked on a pattern. I've set the probability to to um, fully clockwise so that that'll, that pattern will stay as it is. And if I've got the crossfader over to the left, and I'll just bring the filter cutoff wide open, the resonance down, um, and have a listen to that. So you can see on the scope, the shape is changing from triangle to saw. Slowly, that's thanks to that LFO from output B of this disting. So that's already quite pleasant. The, the filter, we can turn the resonance up. If I bring the cutoff down, the envelope from this VCA is controlling that filter as well. It's got quite a nice warm analog sound considering these are all digital. And this Z control on the envelope and VCA. That controls the attack and release, so I can... It's quite expressive, you can kind of... Dial in much more pizzicato-y kind of sounds, or... Now, if I bring the crossfader across to... Side. I can bring in some of that square wave an octave below. Resonance down a bit. Got a little bit of reverb here from the end. Turn that up. You can also freeze this reverb by pressing Z. Which is quite interesting. Hold that reverb tail indefinitely. with a mix of these two wave outputs. And the tape delay, if I bring a little bit of that in, what's quite nice about the, the way the Z control works on the tape delay algorithm is that by default it will, as you increase the feedback, it will also increase the level of the delayed signal. And conversely, when you bring the feedback down, it will reduce the level. It's quite a intuitive kind of way to do it. You get quite nice walls of feedback like this. Let's leave it like that, a little bit more reverb. Got an octave switcher on the VCO as well, which is quite handy. Let's just evolve 
evolve the pattern a bit. If I unlock the Turing machine or unlock the shift register, it'll start to randomly flip notes. When you hear something you like, you can just lock it again. Let's bring the drums back in. length of the Euclidean pattern as well. We get some more interesting polymetric patterns where I'm feeding in a 9 by 16 clock. Every 15 steps this will start looping again. So it's a pretty powerful sequencer and synth all in one. I'm just going to jam on this for a minute. So yeah, there you have it. Now, I'm not actually trying to suggest that buying 10 dustings is the best way to create a modular synth here. You'd have to be a bit of a masochist to do that. Although, of course, if you want to try, don't let me stop you. The point I'm trying to make here instead is that a disting can in theory perform just about every function you're likely to need in your modular synth, so it's always worth having one around. Need a simple oscillator to FM your analog oscillator? Use a disting. Need a VCA with a built-in envelope generator? Disting. Need another LFO for some extra modulation? Disting. Need a lush stereo reverb? Disting. I'm sure you get the idea. Anyway, hope that was all useful. Let us know what you think in the comments and give us a thumbs up and a subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again soon.